So Elon was on Joe Rogan's podcast again and shed some interesting details on the release dates of the Cybertruck and the Roadster and also on Neuralink. On the topic of Tesla, just when you thought that Giga Shanghai is the lifesaver, they too are now shut down. But why? And just when we thought that the Freeman factory is allowed to reopen, it gets shut down again by Alameda County. And then they're on Biden and Unity. Two electric car startups, which are facing big troubles now. But things are looking better for Volkswagen, as they are preparing for the launch of the VW ID3 in June. And also, we never talked about electric motorcycles. So it's about time we did. And finally, a new report of Lux Research comes to the conclusion that most Hyperloops in the US won't operate before 2040. A lot to talk about, so let's get started. So Elon was again on Joe Rogan's podcast. We remember that the last time was more than one and a half years earlier. This time, there was no marijuana smoking involved. However, some other interesting topics were mentioned, as you can imagine. So on the topic of Tesla, most noteworthy is of course Elon's mention of Cybertruck and Roadster. Elon said that the Roadster would be delayed and that Cybertruck and Tesla Semi would have priority. Strategically, this makes a lot of sense, of course. Looking at the steadily increasing pre-orders, the Tesla Cybertruck will become an absolute cash cow, and due to its steel exoskeleton, it will be very cheap to manufacture. Therefore, we assume that the Cybertruck will generate a lot more revenue for Tesla than the Roadster. And the Tesla Semi, which had been delayed from the end of 2020 to 2021, will also launch by that time. Therefore, having three new vehicle lines launching in the same year just doesn't make so much financial sense. And Elon also talked about Neuralink. He said it would launch as soon as next year, but we know the Elon time adjustments, right? He said that it would at first be utilized to treat certain medical conditions as it would be able to neutralize epilepsy, Alzheimer's and even strokes. He said that Neuralink would detect the occurrence of such diseases before they would even appear and counteract them, thus not allowing such brain diseases to even materialize in the first place. Now we were always following the development of Neuralink with great interest because we think it may play a pivotal role in future travels to Mars with some kind of Neuralink VR holodeck simulations, about which we by the way talked in this video here. But of course the potential of Neuralink goes much much further, namely we could be able to one day communicate with each other telepathically and languages would be instantly translated by Neuralink, therefore eliminating all language barriers. Long term it might avoid an AI extinction event by allowing us to merge with the AI overmind in order to become a giant super hive mind. The AI overlord would thus see us as indispensable. Hopefully though it won't go as far as these guys here, they might have gone a bit over the top at some point. Also on the topic of Tesla, just when we thought that Giga Shanghai was the lifesaver, they now had to shut down too. Not directly because of the virus, but indirectly. The supply chain is severely disrupted by the crisis and Tesla is getting many parts for their China-built Model 3 from overseas. These supply chains are getting now more and more affected by the shutdowns and therefore essential parts are missing. We hope these issues will be resolved soon, because demand in China for the Model 3 is just continuing to rise. And by the way, this phenomenon is not only occurring in China. Demand for Teslas just far outweighs the production capacity, especially in these brutal times. In Germany, for example, Tesla was the only car maker, the only one to actually grow in April 2020 compared to April 2019, with 10% of growth. So while editing this, turns out Giga Shanghai has already reopened again. Repeat, Giga Shanghai has reopened again, production back to normal. Excellent news! But the Fremont factory is now suddenly not allowed to reopen again, because Alameda County, where the factory is located, wouldn't allow Tesla to reopen last Friday. This is just crazy, we have to say. 
pure insanity. We can understand precautionary measures, but come on, look at Giga Shanghai. That factory has been running for weeks now without any new cases. Why? Because everyone is wearing a face mask and keeping distance. So seriously, whoever is in charge for Alameda County is either insane or bribed by some legacy car makers and or big oil to delay the reopening of Tesla's Fremont factory as long as possible. And of course, this made Elon extremely angry, and rightfully so. Therefore, he said that the Tesla headquarters will be moved away from California to Texas or Nevada, and even the whole Fremont factory at some point in the future, should the factory not be allowed to reopen soon. And Tesla also sued Alameda County. We have to say, excellent Elon. We 100% support this and we are astounded that Elon was so patient all this time. We even have this Democrat assemblywoman using profane language on Elon. Seriously, these are our politicians these days? Another 100% accurate prediction of idiocracy. Oh, and she's backed by Chevron by the way. Wow, what a coincidence. So Elon decided to reopen the Fremont factory despite Alameda County orders and he said if anyone should be arrested, it should be him. Fortunately, no one was arrested yet. And it seems as of this moment that Elon has the backing of the governor of California and even of the president. Which of course the left-leaning media will certainly not like. This will certainly give way to lots of insane, stupid, anti-Elon, fat narrative stories. Something the media really loves doing. Portraying Elon as the evil Machiavellian CEO. So yes, we hope Alameda County comes back to their senses. Because if they lose Tesla, they are doomed. And here in Germany, at Giga Berlin, still not much is happening. The chief of Europe seems to have gotten a bit annoyed and frustrated. We have to say, considering the insane situation at Giga Berlin, we can understand him. Fortunately, Tesla has enough cash to master this crisis. But for some other electric car makers, things aren't looking as good. Biden, for example, just keeps delaying and delaying. And now it looks as if many workers at their Nanjing factory haven't received their last monthly salary yet. The management took even 80% pay cuts and now Biden is seeking to raise $500 million additionally in a new Series C funding round led by the Chinese state-owned car manufacturer FAW. Let's hope they will get the necessary cash infusion to survive the crisis. Another car maker that is in peril right now is the Swedish electric car startup Unity. We mentioned Unity already quite a while ago when they revealed their cute looking urban electric car, the Unity One. Now only a few months ago, Unity revealed the production version of the car, which still looked surprisingly futuristic. But now apparently the crisis has also brutally hit them and they are now too seeking for additional funding. We hope they will be able to raise new capital because the car is really looking cool, has up to 300 kilometers of range and will cost only between 17 and 25,000 euros. But things are looking a bit better now for Volkswagen, despite the many software bugs which reportedly plagued the ID3. They are still aiming to release the car for ordering on the 17th of June, but only for people that pre-ordered it already. They have reportedly 37,000 pre-orders, more than their production capacity for the whole year of 2020, which will be around 30,000 units. We are curious to see how exactly VW plans to get rid of their software bugs, most likely with some post bug fixes after the initial launch of the VW ID3. Well, at least they are finally launching the car. And since we do like the ID3, we hope the car will perform well. We believe the ID3 will appeal to many buyers in Europe, especially since the entry price will be around 30,000 euros before incentives. We've never talked about motorcycles on this channel yet, so I'd say it's about time. Because this one here, the Verge TS, is just too cool to ignore because of the cool futuristic look. It's the first production motorcycle that we know of to feature a hubless rear wheel. That is freaking awesome. 
It's about time hubless wheels would enter the mainstream market. We've seen concepts of hubless bikes and motorcycles since decades now, but many engineering challenges needed to be overcome. Now apparently Verge managed to overcome them and put it all into a really nice looking package. The motorcycle itself will have a highway range of about 200 kilometers or 120 miles, a city range 50% more than that figure, a power output of 80 kilowatts and a sub 4 second figure to 100 kilometers per hour or 60 miles per hour. So yeah, we hope that in the not too distant future, we'll be able to buy a Tron light cycle. Now if that would come to market, our motivation to get a motorcycle driver's license would be increased by a factor of 1000 at least. And finally a bit on Hyperloop again. By the way, the Hyperloop debunk video is being edited currently and we probably will be able to release it in two weeks. We're sorry that it's taking so long, but the video is quite lengthy and contains lots of calculations and stuff. And we're doing three videos per week now, so doing that on top is quite time consuming. And we like to do other stuff also sometime, you know, like uh, playing a PC game, going outside into the sun, you know, uh, going for a walk and stuff like that, you know? It's not only YouTube, 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 everyday YouTube, all the time YouTube, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, a new study conducted by Lux Research comes to the conclusion that we probably won't see the first Hyperloop routes in the US before 2040. Of course, you can find the link to the study in the description. What they basically say is that the costs are currently just too high to make Hyperloop economically viable, even though it is technologically feasible. The cost per mile, they say, is quite a lot higher than initially estimated and requires therefore more upfront investment. Now we of course all know this problem with new disruptive technologies. Just look at electric cars. They were super expensive at the beginning. 10 years ago, there was basically only the Tesla Roadster, which had a good range and it cost $100,000. Now an electric car with the same range as the Tesla Roadster 10 years ago costs only one third of that or even less. 10 years in the future, an electric car with double the range will only cost half as much. But the beginning is always difficult for a new disruptive technology, even more so for one as ambitious as the Hyperloop. It will require very large investments. But once the ball gets rolling, once a few Hyperloop tracks start operate worldwide and show that it's doable, more and more Hyperloops will be built, thus driving down the cost. But we agree that realistically, we won't see any Hyperloop tracks before 2030 at least in the West. However, in the UAE, we will probably already see a Hyperloop before that. Hyperloop will first be built by countries who see it as a prestige project. So first the UAE and then maybe China. After these countries have shown the feasibility of Hyperloop, the West will realize that this new mode of transportation would offer many benefits and will thus open up towards Hyperloop. So yes, regular travel by Hyperloop in the US by 2040 seems realistic, but in Dubai and Abu Dhabi already by the second half of the 2020s. And don't forget that high-speed railway is also extremely expensive. $60 billion for the proposed San Francisco-Los Angeles high-speed railway. Just saying. So not only Hyperloop has this problem. So do you think 2040 is maybe a bit too pessimistic for the first commercial Hyperloop systems in the US? And do you also think that it makes more sense to first release the Cybertruck rather than the Roadster? You just watched the JS Disruption Report, which you do an every Wednesday, where we give you our opinions about the most recent development in disruptive technologies. So thanks a lot for watching and I'd say, on to the future! Very nice! That was perfect. Look. The, the, your favorite part. <laughs> that was the disruption report now, right? YouTube. All the time YouTube, you know? Huh? All the time YouTube, YouTube. Everyday YouTube.